All right, so second part of this video is about can you walk my audience through the process of applying a master's program for mechanical engineering here in Germany, mm. step by step. Go yeah. ahead. First question what we are going to answer or address is why a mechanical engineer should apply in Germany. A lot of the, you, you, you name a car like Audi, BMW, Skoda, Volkswagen, everything is in Germany, so which is which is one of the reasons why I applied in Germany, yeah? Right. It doesn't mean that, okay, you, you're gonna, as soon as you finish your master's, you're gonna work for these companies or these car companies. It's not about that, but you learn, you study in a country where these ideas culminated. That is That itself is, gives you a honor and responsibility to, to build on your master's, I right. would say. So that's why you should do your mechanical... Man mechanical courses here, it, I would suggest, because right. rather than any other world, because mechanic, German mechanical engineers are most wanted all over the world. Right. And it's, there's no, no way that you would go without a job or something it's like yeah you uh -huh. are and at the same time you will have to equip yourself yeah it's like For it's sure. not so easy to get a to be a mechanical it's just like being an astronaut you would you wouldn't go <laughs> to uh, Mars yeah but then it's like no what I'm saying is like you being an astronaut you would never say that okay I would never run out of job opportunities or yeah. something. you would be off Eden Park but then to become an astronaut yeah, so difficult to, right so work hard for yeah it. it's 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 the same thing you know to because me doing my masters in mechanical engineering, I just learned it now because it's really very difficult. You'll have to sit, write, write, write and learn, learn, learn to, to finish your master course. Yeah. Can you walk us through the process of applying as a student? What, what should I do first, second, third, fourth? Yeah. First thing is like uh, every aspiring student should go is like visit the website called DAAD. D-A-A-D. Yeah. That's right. the Deutsche Akademische Austausdienst website so this is all about of course i can go on dad website have a look at the database mm -hmm. but after that the real work starts yeah. of filing an application yeah right but before i file the application can you help us what are the requirements what i should have basic things in my pocket and then arsenal to fire the gun like you know yeah like yeah yeah those are actually pretty f uh, simple actually i would say five basic requirements first is okay. your bachelor's or if you're applying for bachelor's here, then your 12th standard certificate. Saying that you have done some kind of education before you've come here. So it's right. like, uh, in my case, it, it was my bachelor's certificate, yeah. Which is in mechanical? Yeah, which is in mechanical. And in the right field, like if you have done it in bachelor's and you can apply for computer science, that is something pretty, pretty appreciated by the German universities, I would say, because they don't offer you just like that a course just because you apply for it or sure. you're good at something like that they give you masters only if you have done the relevant course in your bachelor's uh -huh. they, so that is something a very very important right. requirement yeah second thing is language yeah in what language you're going to learn the course medium of study medium of study exactly medium of instructions or how do i how do i put it into words the last two years all the universities which offer english courses have been charged nowadays so yeah i i know like in the state of baden württemberg they mm -hmm. started the certain amount of fees but exactly. uh, it's still i would say so less compared to other countries yeah exactly like you yeah. look at us canada and all these places if you're gonna do your course in english then you all you you need ielts or, or TOEFL. TOEFL. Yeah. yeah that is yeah and if you're gonna do your german then it's it's going to be this c1 in days how telk or right. c2 in Gyote or test daf or whatever right yeah first thing is relevant subject of bachelor's you need second thing is uh, IELTS and if German my course language. is in english then i need ilts or uh, toefl of jeden fall yeah i yeah. mean compulsorily yeah, yeah yeah and then german based on the requirements from your university it should sure. be b2 should be fine for everything but some universities they are okay with even a2 i guess but now they have raised bars i do not know you'll have to check in the dark websites depending on the course and the university you choose then you have this the letter of recommendations either from your professors or if you've worked if you have a work experience from your ceos or something yeah so what if people don't have any work experience they could go to their professors or their principals from ah, the university you know yeah, yeah. it's just that you know some universities don't really ask for it but it's better that you send it because it really gives them that okay this college does really exist and this person is addressing this person from this college you know it's mm. like because if you if, you, if, you, if you're a guy who've done some engineering course in some kind of a rural place or something which they might not would have heard about it until unless if, if you're from all these IITs then okay but then the other universities or other affiliated colleges or something so when when there is a professor or a, uh, or a principal who's addressing in their letter pad you know it's like then you you just give them the feel that okay this is something 
very professional. So letter of recommendation yeah, exactly. is needed. It's always advisable to have. Yeah, yeah, advice of, advisable right. to have. And how, like, where you write about yourself, what is your background, what you want to learn in that university. Those are called as statement of purpose or letter of motivation. Yeah, SOP or LOR. Your transcripts and your certificates, like whatever you're good at, like your internships, your... Uh, your work experience certificates and everything yeah. should be attested because you can't really send your originals uh, right because you would be applying for different universities. We're going to get to that when you're explaining the step by step process of uni assist filing of application. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So just tell them um, where can they get their documents attested? Yeah, they could get it attested in any by by any gazetted officer it's like yeah they would really go to the court where they find the lawyers like the notary notary yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they say so you could get it there where you have to see like this copy is original or this is a certified true co copy true copy or whatever it is yeah so so that is that should be fine for an attestation i mean i don't know if am i true or not or is it correct to say but sometime when i was applying for some applications in india mm -hmm. um, i also used to go to my local mla and they Phenomenal, also have yeah. yeah they also have some stamps yeah that's what i said true gazetted copy. officers like everybody authorized, comes in is, like authorized, authorized guys yeah like okay. doctors but Everybody through government, by the government, not the, not the private doctors, not the private lawyers, not the pri I mean private advocates, right? Uh, not the private po police officer or security officials or something. The one appointed by the government. Got it. Yeah. Got it. So can you just repeat those five important things? So let me repeat actually. So one you need is a bachelor's in the relevant course. So mm -hmm. an example, I'm doing mechanical, so I should have mechanical bachelor's. Yeah, exactly. Second thing is I should have a transcripts, which has to be attested. But what if a student who is still studying right now mm -hmm. while he's pursuing? Yeah, he would be having his uh, semester certificates like or do they? Yeah, or okay. or this called this provisional certificate or something because even I was applying when I was applying in 2015, uh, I didn't have my bachelor's certificate with me, so I had to apply it with my provisional certificate. So you take provisional certificate while you're studying in your last semester. No, yeah, 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 exactly. That okay. that is given to you in the last semester. Right, right. Let's go back. So quick recap of five documents required. Mm -hmm. Five things actually. Okay. Uh, relevant bachelor's degree. Uh, the language requirement, yeah. which is uh, if my course is in English completely, uh, then IELTS or TOEFL. Yes. And sometimes yes. even for English courses, they ask you for B1 or A2 level of German. So yeah. that. Mm. Uh, third thing is letter of recommendation, letter of motivation, mm -hmm. and then transcripts, which are supposed to be attested. Yeah. Five things. Going further from here on, so we know the five requirements, which are basic for any masters if you want to apply. Well, there can be a lot of plus documents, like plus three, four documents, depending on university, what do they want? Can you explain where can my audience, if somebody who's looking for mechanical engineering masters, mm -hmm. where can they go and apply? There is two ways of applying to a university, either directly through a website, from the website of the university, right. or through UniAssist. UniAssist is an organization where they validate your certificates, where they validate you whether you're really eligible for the universities because it is set up by the government actually. So yeah. you really can't infiltrate or there is no corruption in it or something. Right. Where they evaluate your right. certificates, for that you'll have to pay them. So you'll have to, that is one kind of a applying procedure. Or you could directly apply to a university getting into their website uh -huh. and just going into following the links, whatever they have. Right. But even when you apply through a uni assist you will have to click onto the websites university websites get the pdf document from the website right it's like the filled in application i've made a video of four part video i'm going to link it in the description so that you can watch step by step of filing of application through uni assist now he's explaining i know what you're saying now yeah it's after filing application yeah. you get a pdf file yeah explaining that you, Mr. X, have applied in this, this university mm. and uh, all the details. All the details You take come. the printout of that. Yeah. And what do you do after that? You, you either take the printout and attach it with your certificates when you're sending into uh, UniAssist right. or if you're applying through online where you scan all your documents and send it, you could just attach this PDF file in the attachments, like where they ask for application. Exactly. Where, the, where there's application column, you'll have to apply this, put this, so that the UniAssist people know that you're applying for this university. Right. Okay. Okay. And yeah. they, I, I've, I also know that they're supposed to send them a physical copy. Yeah. Also. 
Some ask for it, some don't. But I, I did send my physical copy as well. Yeah. What I would you, suggest what that. What did you include in that? Apart from all the five basic things, I added my work experience certificates sure. and all the small, small courses which I did during my college symposiums, where where you ha- have your own talks and where you held if you if you had held any presentations and all these things, the acknowledgement letters. So come on, there are 10,000 students applying for just 25 seats. So you will have to show yourself you are the best. That's so, true. That's true. That's why I, I um, you know, when I counsel people here, I always tell them that when you're studying, try to go for internships because that's what helps you to build your profile really strong. Exactly. It shows that you are more dedicated towards your subject. You are willing to do more than just your studies. Yeah. If you're from India, your borders are no more just India now. Your competition is the world. Well, exactly. Right? So it's it's just a game of supply and demand. Trust right? me, students from France and Spain and whatnot, it's like we think that European countries are already so so educated guys. They themselves apply in German, Germany to get a German seat or something. So so it's like when you're in, in, in competence with these guys, when you compete with them, so you should be able to see, for example, when they, when you just click on your achievements or when you just click on those, like you should see your profile, like how long it goes or something. All right. Just, the board is. Yeah. But please don't add all these petty yeah, yeah, things. Yeah, I and know. Once they see the petty things, they're just going to put across and they're just going to throw it away. What? This guy has done something like that and he, he, he has achieved, he has put it in achievement or something. So make sure that whatever you add is really a value or re, you know, in terms of, in, in a global arena, when you see it, right. it should be a really a wonderful thing, I would say. Right. Okay.